Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyaj Jutani. I am actually a medical resident at Stanford in internal medicine, and I'm finishing up my intern year, and I wanted to take this time to create videos related to intern year. Specifically, I want to talk about what it means to be rounding in medicine. I'm sure any of you have heard the term rounding all the time, and it's actually quite integral to anything that anyone in medicine ever does. So let's talk a bit about what is rounding. I'm going to tell you about what it is, ultimately how you can do it, and how you can excel at it, because it's a big deal, and it's it's something that's specialty agnostic, actually. Every specialty has its own form of rounding, and it's important for you to be good at it. So what's rounding? Let's start with the definition. Rounding is essentially a structured way for a medical team to get together, touch base about every patient that they have on their list, and ensure that every patient has a plan. It's a team-oriented activity, and you often need to go through every patient every day because otherwise you'd be very surprised at how quickly things can get lost. The other important part about rounding is that it's often the time it gives you a chance to run questions by your attending and people who are much smarter than you in different areas. And that way, you know, if you have a question going into the day, like should this patient even be on antibiotics, you can bring it up on rounds. And if you want to think about this uh, in terms of an analogy, you can think about corporate America. Uh, in any company, there's tons and tons of meetings, right? People always are meeting. And for the most part, it's because they want to touch base about X, Y, or Z project. Rounding is kind of the hospital way of having a meeting. It's an interdisciplinary meeting that allows everyone to get at the same page for different patients. Now that we've talked about rounding, I also want you to know different specialties round in different ways. Um, you know, internal medicine spends a lot of time on rounding because we try to think about every single problem there is. Surgery, for example, may spend some time on rounding, but they're more focused on whatever area that is actually going to undergo surgery. So if it's like an ortho case, they'll focus a bit more on pre-op, post-op, pain management. Um, and so every team has a different way of rounding, but know that there's certain things that you can do to make yourself great at rounding. So there's different members of the rounding team. As I said, rounding is multidisciplinary. It often includes the attending who's usually the main boss. It can be uh, male, female, doesn't matter. Usually it's the main person in charge of the team and whose name is going to go on every single order. And if something goes wrong or if something goes right, usually the attending should be aware of it. Then there's a senior resident. This is someone who's kind of aspiring to be in the attending role. So they're still quarterbacking and seeing the entire team. And then there's usually a junior resident or an intern like myself. An intern is responsible for executing the entire plan. So if you want to think about this again in terms of corporate America, I'd say the in intern is usually kind of like the employee. The senior resident is more like the manager and the attending physician is more like a CEO, kind of overseeing the holistic care of the patient. And then you often have other people who are part of the medical team, the pharmacist. You often have case managers. You often have speech language therapists. The pharmacist usually makes sure that all the meds that you're ordering are dose adjusted for hepatotoxicity, dose adjusted for renal toxicity. They also recommend certain meds if you don't have an idea for what might be a good medication for X problem. Case managers, on the other hand, are mostly thinking about how do we help the patient outside of the hospital? Where is the patient going to go when they're discharged from the hospital? Are they going home? Are they going to a skilled nursing facility? Are they going to get home health, which means is a nurse going to come to their home and help them with their medication? The case managers work magic, and they're so, so important when you're really thinking about the long-term care of the patient. You also have nutritionists. Is this patient getting enough nutrition? What can we do about their diet to help them out? And all of these individuals may not be physically present on rounding, but their tokens are almost always taken into account. So if someone's not getting enough food, we say, okay, let's reach out to dietary. Let's reach out to physical therapy to see if this patient can walk see what they need to get home safely. And then, of course, you have medical students who are learning the ropes and understanding what it means to be a part of the rounding team. Now let's go through the components of rounding. There's pre-rounding, there's the actual rounding, and then there's post-rounding. When you're pre-rounding, you're getting everything together to essentially round. It sounds kind of silly, but you'd be surprised at how important it is because you might think you can just meet and round on people, but actually you need to prep a bit beforehand because you want to know, is a patient very unstable? Oh, this patient's lab values are not headed in the right direction. We should talk about that. This patient had this medication yesterday. It didn't seem to work well. What should we do about that? You need a few moments to gather your thoughts. So pre-rounding is when you actually get those moments. And for my institution, we pre-round usually from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So we get in at 7, we pre-round, and then at 9, we actually start rounding. 
By pre-rounding, I'm getting all my data in together. I want to make sure all my patients are doing well. If a patient's lab looked wrong or a patient's imaging looks off, I know right away that this is something I need to bring up. Is this something I need to bring up right now or can I wait? Even if I wait, this is the patient we'll talk about first on rounds. And then rounding is when you actually go through the process, which I'm going to go through. And lastly, post-rounding is when you finish, you execute your plan, uh, you basically talk about everything you wanted to do and you actually go ahead and do it, right? So now let's talk about the components of rounding, the second part, and how you can be really good at it. I think of rounding in four big steps. There's the subjective, there's the objective, there's the assessment, and then there's the plan. It's called the SOAP format of rounding. And just by remembering the SOAP format, S-O-A-P, you'll get really good at knowing what you need to ensure you know to present well in front of the attendees. So now, let's go through all of this one by one. When you're rounding on someone, the first thing I do is give myself the one-liner for a patient. The one-liner is essentially, what is this patient in a nutshell? So for example, maybe it's a 65-year-old with a past medical history of Alzheimer's dementia that's coming in with rapid onset chest pain that seems to be responding to nitroglycerin with two negative tropes and a normal EKG. So you can see that in that one-liner, you have the past medical history, you see why the patient's coming in, and you see the most recent interventions that have been made. I always think about the patient's one-liner in my head before I start. Once I have that one-liner, you then focus on the subjective aspects of the patient. The subjective aspects are based on entirely what the patient says they are feeling because they're subjective. So you ask the patient, hey, how are you doing this morning? Where is your pain? How are you um, responding to that pain? And then you also want to summarize what happened in the last 24 hours. Like let's say yesterday for this patient, we got an infectious disease consult because we were worried about an, um, endocarditis. Well, infectious disease, what did they say? Did they recommend an antibiotics? If they recommended antibiotics for how long? How, what type of antibiotics? IV or PO? If they recommended IV, when do they expect to transition to PO, right? So recap the last 24 hours and ultimately end with thinking about what the patient was feeling this morning. You have to physically go and see the patient and just say, hey, how are you responding to X, Y, or Z? The second part of um, pre-rounding or the second part of rounding is the objective aspects. You review all of their objective data. And what I mean by this is there's a lot of objective data. The first one is the vital signs. What is their heart rate? What is their temperature? What is their blood pressure? What is their respiratory rate this morning? By writing that down, you're already showing me, is the patient septic? Is the patient hypotensive? Is the patient tachycardic? Right? That's the first part. The second part is, is the patient stable, unstable, or very critically ill? If the patient's hypotensive, has an uptrending lactate, and is also not mentating well, that's a patient who probably shouldn't even be weight waited on until round. Do you need to address and make sure that patient is stable enough? So maybe give them some fluids, consider starting some antibiotics before you get to rounds, right? That's the first part of objective data. The second part of objective data can include things like ins and outs. So if a patient is being diuresed and getting some medications to help them pee out some fluid and their fluid overloaded, how much fluids did they take in and how much did they pay a pee out? Um, what was their dry weight yesterday and what was their weight today? By kind of tracking these metrics, you can actually keep track of very precisely how patients are doing. The third part of the objective data is the physical exam. What's their heart sound like? What does their lungs sound like? What kind of abdominal exam do they have? Do they have ascites? Do they have lower extremity edema? Do they have jugular venous dysfunction? By making sure you do a good physical exam on pre-rounds, you can then overlie that with the overlying findings you have. If someone's coming with heart failure and they have JVD and lower extremity edema, that's putting, a, putting together a really great story for a heart failure exacerbation, right? And then the last thing is, what are their labs? So that's not mentioned here, but what are their labs doing? Did you get a CBC on them this morning? Did you get a BMP? What's their potassium like? What's their sodium like? If their potassium is low, did you replete it? If their sodium is low, did you give them the fluids they might need for it, right? And lastly, did you get any imaging? Did you get an MRI in the last 24 hours? Did you get a CT scan? You have to review a lot of this data on pre-rounding so that when you're actually rounding, you have it ready to go, right? You want to tell all... Tell the person who's listening a story, and for that, you often need a lot of these details. And lastly, is the assessment and the plan. I think these two are probably the most important aspects of rounding. So the assessment takes everything and puts it together. It takes the subjective data, it takes the objective data, and it puts it together. Let, let me give you an example. So for example, let's say there's a patient, 37-year-old, um, he came in because we were worried about endocarditis. Well, if we were worried about endocarditis, what did we do yesterday? Well, yesterday we um, we saw that he had a fever. We saw he had Osler's nodes on exam. We saw that he had 
um, a, a murmur on auscultation. And so because of that, we then got a TTE, which confirmed that he does have endocarditis on the mitral valve. And then because of that TTE, we are now consulting IV to figure out what antibiotics would be best for this patient. And the blood cultures are growing X, Y, and Z. The assessment you can see puts together the patient's subjective fever with um, the patient's subjective feelings with the objective data of a fever, blood cultures, um, their vital signs, and then even their physical exam. And by doing that in the assessment, you're painting a picture of what the patient has. And then lastly is the plan, where you go through every single issue the patient has and talk about how you're addressing it. So first part, endocarditis, hashtag endocarditis. Uh, we did a TTE, it showed evidence of endocarditis. We got blood cultures, the blood cultures are going this. We consulted ID and they recommend this. Now, the next thing is the next problem the patient has, because most patients are very complex. Maybe the patient is hyponatremic. How are we working up that hyponatremia? Maybe the patient is hypokalemic. How are we working up the hypokalemia? Maybe the patient is, um, you know, abdominal distension. How are we working that up? For each of those problems, you need to go through a plan for them. And then you actually summarize that in your presentation. So your presentation is usually going to be mostly the plan, and you're going to talk about how you're addressing each of those things. But you can't do that unless you have a good subjective, objective, and assessment, right? And so ultimately, this is what rounding is. You're taking in a lot of data, and it can be very overwhelming, but you're synthesizing that data, and you're coming up with a good plan, running it by your entire team. And obviously, you're not doing this alone. If the nutritionist has something to add, they will tell you. If the attendants thinks you did something wrong, they will tell you. And that's the point. You're learning from all of this. And that's why you're doing it as a team. The point of rounding is not to show someone that, you know, you know more than them. It's actually to come together and make sure we all ensure that nothing gets missed for patient care. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.